Nem hoznám tovább az időt. Well, I don't want to take up any more time. I'm Buharator. And I'd like to speak for three quarters of an hour about the following. Basically, as we heard during the previous two presentations, most of the audience uh, were here during Ferry Andras and Zoli's uh, presentations, who spoke about how we can develop exploits. And the topic of my talk is how we can integrate these programs in a framework system and what the benefit of a frame is because it makes your job a lot easier in testing intrusions on a daily basis. Well, I saw the great speakers developing their own agenda, so this is my agenda. I'll give you a short introduction to the framework and POC exploit, Metasploit module, what the pitfalls are and why it makes sense to add them to Metasploit and what should be borne in mind then Metinterpreter, Metapreter and scripts. I'll also describe uh, because uh, they are effective in the exploits. And as I've asked you, please install the VMs and boot them up. I wonder who's managed to so far. And please raise your hands if you'd like to. Thank you. And I'd also like to find out who's worked with the Metasploit framework system. Very good, thank you. And who has developed modules in it? Not so many people, but this is why we are here. The Metasploit uh, project began in 2003, and not so long ago, it's gone beyond the 10,000 revision. Those of you who know something about programming understand that this is a nice big number, and that's one of the biggest Ruby projects out there. It's one of the open source projects also of the many or of, of the few backed up by hard cash because Repressy has purchased the code set earlier this year and I'm not quite sure but there's a real business backing them up and the code is freely available differently from other framework systems. It's an intrusion uh, testing framework system which can be extended using modules and plugins will deal with modules, exploit modules to be exact. And there are payload modules as well, including the shell codes and there are encoders which transform the shell codes in a way that they should be acceptable for the target system. There are auxiliary modules which cover everything else and I think now they are obsolete. The NOP generators, these are already obsolete. I'll come back to this during my presentation. Since we're talking about a framework system, we're also talking about a development platform because the, frame, the framework system provides a set of valuable tools for export, exploit uh, developers which uh, will make their work a lot easier on a daily basis as you saw in the previous two presentations MSF payload generator and the sharper generator functionality was certainly introduced to you and the encoders or for instance, various exploit offset search uh, metasploit scripts. You must have run into them. Well, the occasion why I'm giving you this uh, talk is at the university I began to deal with the framework and uh, I developed my uh, undergraduate thesis on this topic and I found documentation, the user's guide, developer's guide, the latest release uh, 3.4, 3.4. This is still under construction. 
and they don't include a description of many pitfalls that are easy to fall into. And we'll see examples of that. The Metaprater uh, guide was published in 2004, and what, what the heck? Uh, I won't believe it's even. It's been six years since. It's a long time, and the Metasploit the course has been uh, published. And this is a good source, but it doesn't include everything. And there's a mailing list in the open source projects. What typically happens is that you have the hackers who know the code bit by bit. And then someone comes along to ask a question, and then, then, then they will send them walking. And in Metasploit, that's not the case. But the framework mailing list is a good thing to subscribe to. And the by hackers for hackers is the title, subtitle of this manual. So the code itself will describe itself. You won't have to go through the uh, manual, but uh, you can check in this uh, way. Ruby is a very friendly environment because it will uh, teach you how to do what. Um, uh, okay. Who use the Metasploit framework system probably f have already faced the system that uh, you must load lots of modules, uh, process those modules, so that the whole thing develops very slowly. Uh, my solution to this problem was that uh, one should have not only one framework system but several. For example, if uh, if uh, he wants to uh, make a partition in a homogeneous network, then he should collect uh, all the Linux uh, Unix component into into a, a, a memory space, and then he could, he could speed up his own work. Very important Linux Unix type commands that can be issued. For example, we can delete all the RB extension files of the module libraries which we are not interested in. No exploit modules will be in the framework system, only the interest modules. I'd like to add new exploits, and whenever it's ready, they are ready, then I can copy them everywhere I wish. For example, it can be Oracle, Web, WLAN, whatever you want. Get this party started. I didn't want to talk too much about theoretical background, but let's move ahead. I start you the image that you try to install a kind of blood sucker. There is no best, I don't know. Uh, my Windows is booting. No beast without cruelty. We work from the console. There are lots of uh, uh, run files, runnable files. Uh, uh, please tell me if you can't see it. If you if you don't uh, uh, say a word, I assume that you can see it. I start the MS of a console, and with this switch, uh, I can actually filter out all the this inconveniences and they will, uh, the methods because we use the endline support of its own operating system and you can see that we have an easy FTP server two is an old version I don't know whoever uses uh, whoever develops such a software because they are much better than this out of this kind of software maybe it was just a kind of uh, etude simple exercise uh, you go to the small fish and then you can see these ports again where, where they are placed akkor azt mondta, hogy ne nézzük először a keretrendszert, ha nézzük meg magát a forráskódokat. Let's get a look, take a look at the source code instead of the system. Each module has a kind of template according to which we should develop these things, kind of scheme. You can see the hierarchy of the modules. 
Uh, within the module, there are exploit modules and test modules, and uh, the test modules should be replaced uh, to, into Windows modules. I uh, prepared a sample dot rd. I got a simple exploit. Uh, I took away the superfluous parts, and I added some uh, personal information which may help me. Metasploit is not a system which is used for proof of concept codes. At least this is my opinion. The reason why I'm telling you this is that because we must specify the name of the exploit, the description, uh, who did it, well, under what license, and so on and so forth. And whenever you find a bug in your program and would like to, to use the bug, then you are not really interested in the license of your exploits if you would like to publish it. So what is much more important and much more interesting this payload part yeah, in the payload part you may say you may specify how much space we have for our own code in memory for our payload for our payload code there are experts where there is very limited space and then we should jump in and out and uh, as uh, the real shell code is located uh, in the within the memory pet cars parameter is even more important which says uh, for the framework system what are those characters which i uh, wouldn't like to see in my output either network or file output <laughs> default is zero byte because most of the uh, the programs are really upset about zero bytes and then there are these uh, Linux, Maxnox, uh, and so on. Here I can specify the parameter for the encoder, which says that from the encoder, which I, which, uh, uh, which is used from the concrete exploit uh, in order to code the shell codes. The situation is that most functions which are needed for uh, put together complex exploits will ignore the basic setting of encoding or there are byte sequences that are absolutely useless to encode but there are certain byte sequences which should be omitted uh, totally from the transmitted byte sequence. So for this reason let me recommend to you that if you are in a situation that you must omit certain number of characters, you should only use bad cards. Alpha mixed, alpha upper mixed characters are uh, are, can, are uh, there to convert uh, the shell code into uh, uppercase letters or alphanumeric codes, but uh, as you will see, it won't be valid for most part of the experts during generation. We will uh, attack a Windows platform. Target field will be if we have different kinds of operating system to attack, then SIM player uh, defense uh, operation is system with SIM player defense. Uh, require a fixed point, uh, a memory address with a jump instruction, but it's different from operating system to operating system. The meta spoil, spoil framework system gives an opportunity to list uh, all the type of operating systems that the exploit attacks. It's, there is an English version of SP2 with an address, uh, I don't know what it uh, really covers, it is probably a jump instruction. If the jump address differs uh, from the address uh, to which we must jump with EIP, then uh, we can say that uh, this is a situation at XP Linux 2008, we don't know. We can't do this, uh, Unix, and so on. So there is a nice rain which we can listen. And this is where we give the return address, and I will show how we, we can access to the return address. Expert parameters are very important because uh, the reason why we use a framework system because we don't want 
Uh, on the, uh, all the occasions, uh, the need to rewrite uh, shark code and the address that we would like to attend. So uh, we would like to click uh, instead of writing program lines. So I'm attacking uh, dot to uh, post host, and then we have register options, uh, listed values. Opt our port for all remote exploit must be defined, which will specify that in the case of a remote exploit, we need a target port. In the case of an FTP server, it is 21. But we may define any other option like this, like like something which is just uh, taken out of thin air. And if we must enter an FTP server, then we use this uh, username and this password with which we would like to enter. Auto filter, I won't talk about it. Metaspoil, Metaspoiler has uh, an auto, auto point feature, which scans an IP region. We fill the result into a database, and Metaspoil should run all the network uh, exploit for all the machines in the network. Auto filter attributes. Auto filter is the name, and this method will tell us that for a given target, uh, for a given goal, which target should be used. The tag is defined here, and this is what we won't touch now. But it might be interesting and dangerous at the same time. If somebody just jumps into it like a jack of all trade and won't crack all the machines in the network, probably he will end up uh, in a chat situation. Check, sorry, check command for the framework system. If an exploit module is loaded, then it uh, checks if the target is vulnerable or not with a given level of vulnerability. For example, Rick uh, sees that the version number is one under 170. Then uh, it says it's vulnerable, otherwise it says it's not vulnerable and exploit will not run. What we are interested in very much is the exploit method, which we start the connect and uh, close with a disconnect with some other commands here. We join the remote server and then we step away from the remote server. I will speak about MixNet. And this is the mix in that I listed that we loaded in. This is an exploit module, module remotely used through TCP connection. If you take a look uh, at the source code of this mixin, mixin should be imagined as program classes. And if we check the source code of this program class, then we will see that it is an automatically declared has an automatically de declared airport and air host, metaspoid data store uh, elements components. Uh, so we don't have to deal with it in the register options because our host uh, is just simply required from the user. Let's move now to the essential part. I loaded down Milver from Milworm or Exploit, uh, a very ugly. Easy FTP exploit, which is a post authentication deck overflow, for which we should create a library or a directory, which I uh, actually hide somewhere. Uh, and the source I, hi I hid somewhere, uh, at least somebody should find it. Even I myself couldn't find it. 
This is what original XSplit looks like. XP Pro SP tested. There is a big shell code inserted. The exploit writer told me that it will start the car kegs and uh, it wants to count the number of bytes. Some variables are, are generated here. Uh, we get connected to the remote host. There is a a kind of call from this ex from this remote device. We send payload. There is a knob set, a knob slide with uh, 40 knobs instructions, commands, assembly commands, and then we put it shellcode, put and the return address. I've corrected this since my system I didn't have the same return address uh, where the exploit writer put it. EBP points at knob sled. This is the what I call knob slide, sled, sledge, whatever. 74 T1, uh, uh, and so this is the address 91. Metaspoilt, uh, it, it is written into a Metaspoilt module. How? Let's see, let's say we should copy this sample here. This is the name EFT.RB. And then we say, we can say, it's written by Buherator. We give it a description. In our original exploit, let's see, let's see, it, uh, shellcode was 228 bytes, uh, and let me be pessimistic. And uh, this is the maximum amount, uh, you can really measure it with the debugger. As, and then I'll say, that bad characters are the zero zero characters uh, it, and then there will be a line break both version of line break N zero as zero d and then we will see the rest And then uh, I, I must set the return address. Seventy-seven D4 something F. And it, lo and behold, this is what is written here. This option is just neglected. And let's see what we must do here. Let me just get ready and copy how it puts together payload. Again, I still and I know that the length of the knob sled or slide must be 40 bytes. It's a funny function on which the knobs slide down. Nob sled, he calls it nob sled, and said in Hungarian nob chuzda, but it is slide, not sled. Sled is sanko. Okay, okay. And then nob, the last nob. And then I must. Uh, why is it? Why is it important to to have um, uh, more than fourteen lengths? Uh, so instead of giving a uh, value of 90, 40 times, what does this knob slide or knob sled know on can perform? It is just a camera back there, or uh, the, the real thing is that if we push through 40 such values in the network, then a strict IPS tries to cry, why there are so many knobs, knob bytes, because it looks like a knob 
sled slide which is normally used in exploit and its function calls an object generator module which is equivalent to the instruction sequence as if we had done nothing. Yes, it changes the stack value, but then it re uh, it changes the, the values of the register, but then it it re loads them, and when an obsled runs, everything remains as it used to be. Uh, with the exception that we have a heap of garbage in our memory, by heap of garbage bytes, obsled. We, 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 we're ready with this slide? What should be done with the shell cloud? We like the method spoiled framework because uh, if uh, we try out the shell codes and uh, not even the six operates, and uh, I always change the byte codes. In method spoiled, uh, there is a very elegant way of handling it. Payload dot encoded can uh, can actually substitute this. F for each and every exploit, I can choose a payload in the framework system, which will be in my payload object. And if it's called uh, with, it, with its encoded method, then it will return a string, which will uh, be will, will uh, follow the bad car which will exclude those bad car uh, characters given there and it will produce the shell code without those bad car characters and then the return address is a target which we have defined target uh, object red is stored in the red field but x86 uh, is used to convert this was there any intermission or any remark made? Please tell me if I should explain something. And uh, the Ruby way of doing it is that first we set up an array from the string object and then we call pack upon it. This is the pack w, uh, pack v procedure, which is included. This won't be enough, not good enough for us, why not? Because we're not quite sure whether uh, that pass is correctly set. And also, one of the features of the framework is that the payload is extended to a size that corresponds to the definition in the space. So it automatically generates a, a knob slide and then it inserts the shell code of 228 bytes so that we get a sequence with that length. Now let's look at the original exploit, how good it was. Knob slide uh, was 40, 228 was the length of the shell code. So then we can say we can safely correct this to 168, making the knob sled disappear from here, and then it's going to result in an equivalent code for us as though we had left 228 here and disable knobs had been added to the initialization of this module because if it's set to that then this framework insertion will not take place all we need to do is that sock remote tcp mix-in generated this that's a socket for the um, host defined under L host and we boot a payload into it and then out of the socket we do get once 
sorry, will read something back because a few servers want to be read afterwards from the TCP channel. And then we do disconnect. And no need for a knob sled anymore. Please note that up here we defined lots of foolish things and there's lots of comments, but this code, as you can see in the exploit function, it's a bit friendlier than this. One more thing I've left out, I skipped the log on. Let me check how much time I have, Ferry. When do you want me to conclude? At 5.2. So let me check what we've left out. And here's our help. Thank you. So we need to log on, which is really simple to do. Uh, practically the same series of instructions in the targeting default user anonymous uh, under target. So user anonymous, padam padam. Anonymous uh, slash n, that is, you send anonymous slash n, and mkb is another uh, command that has to be issued. It would be good. FTP client, a few of you have uh, written an FTP client and an FTP server as well, haven't you? Because um, there are FTP servers out there in the world. So here's when uh, mixin comes into play. And now let me show you another element just to give you a more complete picture. Mixing it in the framework system is like a module of modules which have implemented a kind of protocol at the server or client level. I'll give you examples. I've uh, collected a few slides out of the Metasploit source code. Here's the mixing spawn RB. And this is where all the mixins are defined for all framework systems. And up here, you have the path to the file, just in case you want to know. And here, TCP, UDP, DIP, SMTP, FTP, you name it. So it's all been written before us. Uh, why should we make an effort? Why should we suffer in order to write it, even though it might be a simple protocol like FTP? So let's make a detour and come back. And I'm going to produce my uh, prefab exploit. Take no offense, please, because it has all the refined features. I won't want to debug my own code on the fly. So MSF exploit remote FTP mixin. I've started this. And to what degree has the code changed? Connect, instead of that, we say connect login FTP mixin. In combination with this, we'll do the following. F FTP mixin registers into the uh, data store variants to be filled in FTP user. FTP pass are uh, the two parameters, which is compulsory for the user to fill in. And then the login will use the data uh, to log on. and. If it doesn't manage, then we'll get an error message. Now, here's debug information, FTP mixin, it gives us this, send CMB, MKD, that's uh, the command I want to issue. And let's use this as the command argument. It's practically the same as we saw before. So we have the, the payload, and here's the knob sled, and the return address. So let's get detached from this. And slip 20 is for testing purposes. I'll take this out. Let's see if it works. Yes, FTP server is running. And I do use exploit test easy FTP FTP. 
That's the name I gave it, show options. This command will list the data store parameters to set. And I'm trying to highlight these lines, FTP pass, FTP user. That's out of FTP mixin. L host is remote TCP host mixin. And here's the payload, which in our case won't work because I've already tried it. But the payload can also have parameters, as you will see. One thing that is certainly working, because I've tried that as well, is the running of the simple calculator. That's the basis for all proofs of concept. So I do exec set payload if you issue this command. And then you keep pushing tabs. Then the framework system is smart enough to list only the payloads. It's like uh, a Unix add-on uh, instruction on the MSF console. It will only list the payloads that, in principle, could fit the exploit-defined maximum space, maximum memory space. So if we have a payload of a 1,000 bytes, and then in exploit, we defined it at 128 uh, bytes, then it will not come up. So in this case, I'm within the parameters, and let's make this Windows exec. Show options. Let's check things again. FTP user. Anonymous is going to let us in because it's configured like that. 56.3 is good because and then I want to run calculator exec and let us pray everybody together so that the demo effect doesn't occur. Well, the exception is quite expected because the embedder um, is going to cause the server to hang up and it will not respond and voila, lo and behold, we have the calculator. What's the benefit of reducing an exploit from a much bigger length to a small size? Then we can uh, consider whether I can use a reverse shell payload or notepad X instead of calculator X. Not that it would make any extra sense. So uh, we can start playing with it from this point forward. But moving on to more exciting subjects, I'm running out of time. So let me show you the exploit of a lot more exciting program. That's MaxDB database manager under SAP. That's a remote loophole which will skip the authentication. I wonder it's been patched. Pansier mentioned this. And also in the upcoming presentation, you'll probably hear about this. Let's look at the source code because that's the most telling part. Well, obviously, I've closed down uh, the word processor and I did that at the wrong time, wrong place. And here's the accounter uh, program. Uh, hands up, who knows what accounter is? Accounter. Those of you who attended the hacker conference, Andas Kobay had a great presentation about this. A counter is a very small code snippet, 30-some bytes, which takes the process. And in the virtual memory area, it will crawl through that area. And we'll look for uh, typically four bytes occurring twice in sequence. And we can define this ahead of time. And then it will uh, continue to run the code afterwards. What we can do based on this is that in a very narrow range exploit, we insert an accounter. And in some way, we get the process memory area to run our process code, which will reside in the memory. And then before the shell byte, these two times four byte prefixes, these are the eggs, by the way. 
these are inserted. Egg hunter will scan the memory and then stumble upon those two eggs. We need two to avoid the problem that, uh, for instance, by accident we could pick a very frequent byte combination uh, for an egg and then uh, it would come up every uh, second sequence and then it would run some foolish uh, code. So the egg hunter is run and with the overflow we take control, the egg hunter will uh, start uh, the scan and then it will uh, come upon uh, the eggs and then we can um, insert quite a long shell code as well. What you see here is again remote TCP exploit is what we are talking about and there's a mix-in and also an egg hunter which will benefit us because EH or IH stub IH egg uh, we do that and uh, let's equal equate this generate egg hunter and that's a method which will return to objects first the counter uh, code and also the egg which will have to be inserted in front of the shell code and you can see that after running this if a counter finds the shell code then we have 800 bytes space for code and we only need to avoid the zero bytes. Disable knobs. I will come back to this. Let's look at the shell code and the packet to send. In this case, out of one packet, we can um, cause neighboring systems to crash and Shark or any sniffing uh, program, a protocol, a header, this could be any such thing. And of course, we don't care the least bit. Of course, the proof of concept exploit uh, code is where I got this from. I copied it. And here's the return address. And then this is all generated for us. And then we'll add a zero byte save one, uh, or save don't care about this for the time being, and then we um, need a map sled, quasi. I did not subtract uh, the end from the beginning. I wasn't that uh, picky. And the payload length, the shell code length, and the map sled size uh, should add up to 1,003 bytes if I did the calculation well. And obviously, the author of the proof of concept retroactively subtracted two times four bytes, eight bytes. That's the mob sled. I insert the payload here, four A's here. I didn't mean to do an APS uh, aversion in here because uh, these four bytes could occur in many places. places. Then knob sled, egg hunter here, and then some random string, 14,900 in length, ram text, ram text alpha. That's a function here. It's a very dumb function. All it does is it generates random alphabetical characters, basically characters. Why did we need disable knobs? The reason is that if for payloading code, if we got always 800 bytes, then we would not be effective at all. And in addition, there are two eggs, and the packet is a lot clearer in structure. If we say we should only have the shell code here, and what's the need for safe knobs? This is not described on the web or in any documentation, but let me come back to egg hunters. 
because hack hunters uh, will disregard the encoder that we could set with the uh, payload, but the bad cars value um, will be taken into account. So that's why I'm saying let's not set the encoder or say that I want only alphanumeric shell code. Uh, you may want that, but you had better list manually or using Ruby tricks or the non alphanumeric characters and the, the framework will take care of generating the code inside rather than setting the alphanumeric criteria and then exploit uh, won't work because a hunter uh, will fail the text with non printing characters save is a similar category and uh, uh, mobs in that case, encoder or bad cops, uh, will both be disregarded. Windows uh, FTP Salon uh, 31 overflow module, uh, which I have no idea what it does. I stole it from there and rewrote it somewhat. I didn't need a lot of it, and I, I left the comments in. And I'm telling it to try a hundred times to uh, produce an opsled, none of the bytes of which should agree with the uh, bad bytes stored. And if this is unsuccessful, then I want an error message or throw an exception. This is a program technique matter. Just make sure you pay attention because illegal characters within the framework are quite loosely uh, managed. So if you generate an encoder or an egg hunter, you can expect that neither the egg hunter uh, values nor the bad cars um, values will be taken into account. But in this way, the stuff is working fine. I, I tried it. We're running a counter. And just think about this. The process must call through the virtual memory area. In a virtual machine or in a weaker machine like mine, it will take a few seconds, even a few minutes. Because when we run exploit, a remote exploit in the framework system, what happens is that first, the payload handler method is invoked. And then shell with comments. In that case, it will mean that it will wait for something to join it. And that uh, will be a separate thread within the Metasploit um, process. And then it will export the a byte series, and the other side will wait until uh, it is uh, connected to something, but it won't uh, wait infinitely until exploit uh, has run. That's the exact point until which it will wait. That's my experience. And since it can take up to quite a few seconds, uh, the egg hunter based um, exploits uh, will get hold of the shell code and halt it. And this is why I put in some sleep. Exploit should not end by sending the packet. OK, I've disconnected. And that's it. Goodbye. And payload must return and find, be found by a counter through a network connection. And it will have to come back to me. And from that point forward, I can deal with it. Um, uh, took away a couple of hours from my life uh, till I understood why my, why my uh, encounter free exploiter didn't work because the header wasn't alive yet. What what can it done? Your time is up. Absolutely up. <laughs> Use exploit test SAP with Max. I'd like to use Max DB. I must show the options. I always forget the options, and it looks more friendly. Remote length, remote post is normally set. My own uh, post is also normally set. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to speak about this. I say exploit and let's see what happens. There are two opportunities here. This is the encounter, uh, the delay of 20 seconds. 
with the delay of 20 seconds, what I told you about. Yes, it went back to, to the first stage of the exploit, which is a very good feature of the method spoil, spoil framework that it supports and make stage payload use very simple. First, it, it gets a code to the other computer which reserves enough memory for us, and then a TCP connection is sent back to a certain address, and then we'll just suck in the real shell code. 748, 32, uh, 1032 bytes must be inserted, uh, which is a very realistic, beyond any reality. So we have a stage one, 299 in length. It read this uh, couple of hundred of thousands of bytes, and they started to work. Metal Pretter, very good, very good gadget. A couple of words. I will just uh, install them to the Windows host to every one of them, and this gadget. It pushes a shell code into the affected process, which is a portable executable loader. The DLL file is pulled through the network, uh, which is then injected into the process memory area. Then performs those steps, which normally are performed by the windows. So DLL is loaded into the process, and this DLL uh, gives uh, an extendable surface for the attacker. It won't touch the Winchester not even a single time. And uh, the whole communication is uh, is done in SSL, uh, with the exception of sending the first couple of hundred of bytes. It's difficult to 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 uh, manipulate an SSL process, so the the whole process is not checked. So we can really just uh, get a full day, full, get our foot in. It's on the DVD, uh, a map called Real Gun, and with this map called Real Gun, and this is the best measure of the capability of this device, with this you can achieve uh, we, that the Windows up it can uh, use any DLL uh, which are there. Uh, and or your steel uh, which you uploaded, so any any method can be called from this metapreter. You can issue it from the metapreter, uh, and uh, without there is no trace, uh, with the exception of a couple of hundred of bytes of traffic, data traffic. Uh, I must stop now. Anybody should be interested in more uh, information, please come to me. Thank you very much for your attention because we are running behind schedule. Thank you. <coughs>